Yo, what's good, everyone? It's your boy Jack Oats to go. You either know or you don't. Um, so, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already know that I am hopping back on the Black Clover anime weekly. Um, I had stopped once Zagre got defeated. I'm not really an anime watcher. I'm, I like to stick to the manga because that's the original source material. It will never steer you wrong. However, there are some times when anime does... Uh, fill in some of the more fine the finer points um and there's a lot of places in this arc that we still don't have answers for uh that the anime could possibly fill in for us so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today um i'm really just going to read this tweet to you um and i'll probably add some things here and there um but i know you guys just don't like reading long threads on twitter especially when there's not a ton of pictures attached to them so um, yeah, I just want to make it a little easier to digest. So anyway, here's the tweet. I'm just trying to figure out how Ralph knew everything about everything his father did up to his death when he never made it out the Spade Kingdom. Not, not to mention the fact that his dad was traveling alone and the other two he was with not only split from him, but also died. Uh, then there's a simple matter of how Ralph even knew where to go. None of it makes sense unless Ralph's dad or one of the other two survived, but even then, why wait so long to get him? Uh, we, could, we could say this has been the only opening where all three of the siblings left their posts, making it viable to successfully escape the kingdom, but we are talking about like a 14-year window. That's crazy to think that there were no other openings, but this one instance and this one instance is perfectly timed so that Yuno leaves the base just before it gets raided. The fight for Yuno is interesting. There's obviously a fight for Yuno. Um, and I say this because we see that King Lois uh, was ready to put him in the throne. He was like, oh man, this guy's a crybaby. Like, but he's got to take over the throne at some point, so let's try and do it fast. Uh, and CL had to be like, yo, like, oh, pump the brakes a bit. Like, he was literally born two cutscenes ago. Like, just let him be a kid. Um, and it seems like Lois was in a real big rush, and he was mighty defensive uh, towards CL when CL asked him about the triad killing the rebels. Um, it, it does seem like you know is the key component to some plan. Uh, what plan? I don't know, but I'll kind of get into it uh, in a, a little bit further down. Um, but you also have the fact that Dante looks at you know in CL's arms, uh, and then when the raid, when the uh, the revolt is happening in the Spade Kingdom, uh, Xenon and two other mages are going for uh, three mages that took Yuno, and th the plan was to get Yuno and probably kill him. Uh, which begs the question, why would they want to kill Yuno? Uh, and this is what we're going to get into further down this thread. So, uh, what purpose does Yuno actually serve? Lois is already looking to move him into the throne right after his birth. And I don't know if I like Lois yet or not. Uh, the triad was aiming to kill baby Yuno for a reason. And this is where the crack brain juices start flowing. So, what if... The Spade Kingdom had meddled with the forces of the Underworld a little too much than they originally anticipated and found themselves in a do-or-die situation. You know, due to his mysterious heritage, was celebrated as he was, as he was because his power may come from the gods. So if they have a problem with devils and demons, the thing they're going to want to do is probably have divine intervention where uh, these demonic beings or powers can... Uh, just be wiped out for good. Uh, and this would rid the spade of demons, devils, for good. Uh, at least that was the hope. And we see that Yuno know, completely bypasses Xenon's devil's magic, and the reason may not necessarily be due to the fact that the mana simply loved Yuno, know, but for the fact that it was a devil's power. And Yuno know, having access to more divine powers was able to overcome it even though the magic itself should not have been overruled due to its very nature because we know it's absolute space yes that's cool um you know that it's going to rule over whatever space it is uh, occupying right so for that very magic that specific magic to be overruled is already odd in and of itself but then uh for it being a devil's power especially 
makes it even bigger as a feat for you now. Um, but I, like I said in this thread, I do believe that it was more of the fact that uh, it was a devil's power being used against you now. Um, and we're going to talk about this a little more too. Uh, so we also see something similar in his battle versus Zagrid. And this notion, or well, before I get that, I'm going to show you this. So we have this panel where they're fighting Zagrid, um, and it says the magic that's it's the magic that's welling up is disintegrating the matter around you now. Um, this is a very similar instance, uh, maybe not the exact same that's happening with Xenon and his devil, but very very similar and. You know, seems to be keep putting himself in these positions where he's overcoming these uh, these devil's powers every single encounter, um, he, and he's just getting stronger and stronger while doing so. Um, and and this plays a part in the gods versus devils uh, conversation that we're going to have in a bit. So uh, this notion sets Austin, you know, further apart as one would be closer to divinity, while the other is closer to the underworld. All of this would mean that Yuna was made to fight for and from the gods, while Asta was made to fight for and from the devils. However, Asta still has some missing pieces to his story, but the dynamic shift is necessary in the grand scheme of things. Being that we were shown the apostles of, uh, of Sephira and the fact that we know Clipot is the shadow of, of the Sephirat, then we know as, we'll love, so, as above, so below. These two forces create a balance. For things to balance, they ultimately just cancel each other out. So take 3x plus 2 equals 3x plus 2. Uh, the answer to this is all real numbers because x can be anything and nothing at all, and it'll still balance. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. The, these freaking people have been doing construction outside since like 6 o'clock this morning, and it's like right outside my window. I wish they just shut the f up. Oh, oh my God! Well, anyway, if you hear that, my apologies. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trucking through this the best I can, even with those rude people out there. So, um, now if we take that and we take the hybridization of these forces, we would see that they no lo they would no longer be bound by the laws that these two forces have been shackled by for all of time. Uh, that's the point of hybrids. You get uh, the best of both worlds in the best case scenario. Of course, you could get some bad traits, of, and that's that's a different story altogether. Um, can even lead to Asta's origin, maybe. But I kind of doubt it at this point. Um, but I do believe that Asta and Yuno are tools to bring about supremacy of either side to offset the balance and ascertain absolute supremacy over all realms of God or so. This could go back to the Jotun Civil War I spoke about on my channel, uh, and the Aesir and the Jotun. Uh, very well may have been at war, as Lick does suggest earlier in the series, and Jotun are doubled up as demons in Norse lore. If you've been on this channel, you already know, but I'll be using those uh, interchangeably. Uh, and though this would suggest that the elves were on a quest for supremacy, it doesn't really match up how they're portrayed in the series, but they have been living peacefully in the realm of the, the living, which devils don't have the luxury of saying. I would go on to assume that they were beings that were banished by the elves themselves long before the first advent. And I say the first advent uh, just as a reminder that one of the queens before Lord Pachika uh, went into the library and found out, like, oh, shit, like, if this happens, 90% of life will be destroyed because this has happened already. So I call it the first advent. Uh and the, and the elves since then have maintained their reign within the realm for that long without major interference from their counterparts. But with Austin Yuno in play, this could revamp the war entirely. And, and then you see I ended that. I'll probably put it on my channel because I know y'all don't like reading, uh, like I said in the beginning. But um, I think this is really interesting because we took a look at Clipa, and, I, and I've said this in like at least five other videos that... Uh, with what Nox showed us, these devils were sealed there. They don't just, they weren't just there. They didn't die after being evil and just go to the end. Like, they were actually sealed there. And some other bad souls would probably go to the underworld since it's there now. But the the beginning of Clipot was probably to seal away Jotun and elves uh, that were not going towards the same cause as the Aesir. 
Uh, and this is where Norse mythology gets really weird because, like I've said in countless other videos, uh, Jotun, while doubled up as demons, are also gods. They come in all different shapes and sizes, ranging from, like, average-sized human to towering beasts. Uh, some Jotun are described as cyclops. Uh, it is just such a wide range, and it's the same with dwarves. Uh, I've come to read that, you know, the size doesn't necessarily dictate what their race is uh, and their... and all of that stuff it's it's just very vague so we have to put puzzles in and take them out as we see fit um but there are some Jotun that are a seer as well uh so it's just a matter of how tabata wants to describe uh these events so that's why i brought up the Jotun civil war i i do still believe that there is a war happening within clipot between devils um, but for the most part, they're all going for the same-ish goal. Uh, as far as the Aesir, I believe not licked necessarily and not 500 years. I, I, I don't know why I said 500, but whenever the first advent was, uh, wh whoever stopped that, I'm saying before then, they seal the way who are now these big devils like Lucifero, um, Majicula and all of those guys um, were sealed away by those people uh, to go on to create the underworld. And they're striving to get out uh, because they were, they f probably feel as though they were wronged uh, and they deserve the rights to the world of the living, uh, which of course the Aesir would not agree with. So they would keep them in Klippot so that they could keep ruling over the realm of the living, or rather all realms actually. Uh, and even clip out since they are at a disadvantage being sealed away. Um, but this this just goes on to show that there's so many moving parts to Black Clover. It's hard to pinpoint one, but it's, it's so fun to come up with different theories. There's so many ways this could go. But I think one thing is for sure that we need to look out for what you know's actual purpose is. And it's coming up, it's right around the corner, and I'm sure we'll see it at least by the end of this arc. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to bring to you guys today. I have another topic I want to go over. I'm not sure if I'll release it today or maybe tomorrow, but uh, keep, uh, keep a lookout for it because it should be pretty interesting. Uh, but other than that, that's all I got. Uh, hit me up on Twitter uh, or in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys thought about this newest episode uh, of Black Clover or if there's anything you want me to go over specifically. Uh, but yeah, this has been Jack Goes to Go. You either know. Or you don't.